All right. Hey, folks. Today's video is going to be continuing the discussion that I started in the last video, which looked at how to arrange your diet without tracking macros or calories. I class that as one of the three major approaches which are in nutrition at the moment. I think in the early 2000s, meal planning was still very much the go-to method for how to arrange your diet. As we progressed through the 2000s and got into sort of 2005, 2010, then it was the rise of macro and calorie tracking and very much the if it fits your macros approach. Now that's not to say macro and calorie tracking wasn't done before that. I remember tracking my macros in 2000 before my fitness pal. I used to track my macros and calories on my calendar in my bedroom. So we had the ability to do that many, many years ago, but it's become more popular since the if it fits your macros trend came onto the scene. And now we have this approach, which is much more of a, what I would call a habit-based approach. As I explained in the last video, those guidelines do end up being quite specific. You can't just have this airy fairy approach and say, just eat when you like, bro. That is a really naive way of doing it. So nowadays, the type of approach that I promote is more of a complete method of eating with certain rules and habits in place to do with how to eat, what to eat, when to eat, and also the psychological and social aspects of eating as well. So I started talking about that last, last video. Now, I would like to offer some more practical suggestions today on how to bulk and cut effectively with this diet model. Because I think whenever the crowd is going one way, we have to maybe just stop and pause for a second and think to ourselves, are we just following this blindly like a trend? Do we really understand what we're doing here before we just jump into this? In the same way that people would jump into macro and calorie tracking or meal planning, decades ago. So I think it's important when the crowd is moving in one direction, just pause for a second and think to yourself, are we on the right track? So that's what I'm doing today. So the inevitable next question is, how do we bulk or cut like this? What does that look like practically in terms of weight gained and weight lost? I think initially we need to lay out expectations for gaining weight and losing weight. With regards to bulking, my general guidelines for bulking is you want to aim for about 1% body weight per month. That's about right. It's a nice broad average for most people and it scales with body weight. Now, there are some exceptions. If you're very overweight or if you're very underweight, there are some exceptions to that rule. But for the vast majority of you people, roughly about 1% body weight per month is about right. Okay. Now, when it comes to cutting body fat, I suggest roughly half a percent to 1% per week, much higher than that is going to make for a very difficult deficit or a lot of activity. Much lower than that is going to be very demotivating if you have a lot of weight to lose. For those who are leaner, half a percent is better. And at the very, very lean stages, you wanna slow that right down. So that's laying out the store for how much you want to lose per month, per week, okay? now. Next thing is, how do you track? You want to create a weekly average for your body weight. You need to be weighing yourself at least three times per week, preferably on non-consecutive days. Now, why would you not just weigh yourself once a week, every week on say Friday? Well, quite simply because your body weight fluctuates massively. Like on average, you are roughly 70% water. Like, Two thirds of us is about water. Some parts of us are more water, some parts of us are less water, but on average, we're roughly 70% water. Now, with that said, with things like inflammation, with stress, with just holding more water due to higher salt intakes, or perhaps eating later at night, <laughs> eating closer to your way in in the morning, that can all massively influence how much weight you are on a given day. Like massively, two, three, four, five pounds even. So if you're only weighing yourself once a week, you are not getting an accurate reading really of, of how your weight is trending across the week. It may just be a coincidence on that day you were very low or you're very high. It can make for very jagged entries. So what I say to everyone is weigh yourself at least three times per week, preferably non-consecutive days, even better weigh yourself every day and just create an average. Now use the weekly average to then decide whether you have gained or lost the right amount of weight. So. If your weekly average last week was 86 kilos and your weekly average this week was 85 kilos, 
you've lost one kilo. And if your intention was to lose weight and be in a fat loss phase, great. You nailed it. You did great. Now, if you were to pay attention to every single up and down in those weeks, you'd go crazy. So cut out the noise, just use an average, which will give you the signal. We have so far covered what our expectations are for bulking and cutting, also how we're going to measure. Now, how do we actually go about making sure we're hitting the right numbers? Set up a diet for yourself, which focuses on proteins, fruits, vegetables, and the type of options which you feel are going to be conducive to your goal. So let's take an example. Let's say you were in a muscle building phase, all right? So you're gonna have about four meals a day, fistful of protein every meal, fistful of vegetables or fruits with every meal. And on top of that, you're going to fill in with rice, oats for breakfast, perhaps some breads. So that's your plan over the course of the day. Four meals, all good, fantastic. You just eat like that with some variations, with some flexibility, but generally eating in that way for about seven days. You then compare that to your weight in the previous seven days. And if you're on the right track, great, carry on. If you are slightly fast in terms of your gaining weight, perhaps replace a rice meal with a potato meal, right? Perhaps take out some of these starchy carbs from one meal and just play with the ratios a little bit, play with the food options, play with the food options to try and adjust the calories. Perhaps you're getting more hungry than you would like. So, okay, add in more vegetables, take out more starches. Perhaps use leaner choices of protein. Perhaps add in more. Um, fibrous vegetables. Play with the ratios a little bit. So play with the ratios based on your hunger, but also based on how much weight you're gaining. I think one of the common problems when it comes to an approach like this is people will understand the general philosophy of this approach, which is not to track, but <laughs> they'll use that as a green light to just eat whatever they want to eat. Now, that, that's not the point. Like the, the point is to pay attention to your satiety signals and add in more satiating foods if that's going to slow your appetite down. So yes, you're bulking, but if your goal is to gain half a pound per week or 0.25 kilos per week, so you gain you know, a kilo or a couple of pounds per month, if that's your goal and you're gaining weight at twice the rate, the bulk's gonna come crashing to a stop, you're gonna have to cut before you want to. So yes, you're on a bulk, use the amount of weight you're gaining and your satiety cues to change up your menu options so that you're gaining weight at the right rate. So if that was me and I was gaining weight way too fast, I would just pull back on the amount of starchy carbs I'm eating, perhaps the amount of cheat meals I'm having, the off-plan eating, and just as much as you need to, go back to the base of the diet, which is lean proteins and lean vegetables pull back to that base and small amounts of healthy fats. So what I was trying to get to last video, which has hopefully made sense, and I need to repeat it this video is, it's a continuum. It's not a set meal structure. It's a lot less binary thinking, which for some people, it makes it very complicated to understand. It's a continuum. Now, just because I can bulk on rice and potatoes, or whatever else, doesn't necessarily mean you would be able to do that. When you start bulking, and if you add in bulking, what you consider to be clean bulking foods like rice, um, beef, all that kind of stuff, and your weight starts to skyrocket, clearly you need to pull back. Like, I don't care if you think those are bulking foods or Tom, Dick and Harry is bulking with those foods. If for you, those foods are resulting in a gain of one pound per week consistently, four pounds per month, that is roughly twice what you want to be gaining. You need to pull back. So you can have nice long bulks. Your bulking diet might actually look very lean, but if that's what you need to do to be in that gaining phase for a long time, then that's what you do. And it's the same with dieting and cutting body fat. If we go on to using that as an example now, if you are cutting, but your body weight isn't coming off fast enough and you're already doing what you think is good, clean diets like chicken, rice, all that stuff, then you need to pull back more. So rice might not be on the menu for you when you're cutting. It's not for me, really. I mostly stick to lots of vegetables, meats, proteins, and also potatoes as a starchy carb. Potatoes give me more satiety 
per calorie than rice. If you are dieting on what you consider to be decent dieting foods, but the weight isn't coming off fast enough, then again, go back to my video previously and pull back on your options. Consider every macro you're eating, protein, carbs, and fats, and go towards the leaner options. So make sure your proteins are leaner. So your chicken breast, white fish, and make sure your vegetables are leaner. Go towards your broccoli, your cauliflowers, and do what you need to do to satisfy the rate of gain or the rate of cutting per month or per week. People love asking the question, is this okay for breakfast? Or is this okay as a diet food? You tell me. Add them into your diet. If your body weight isn't moving in the right direction or isn't moving fast enough, then it might not be right for you. This is what I've been trying to get across with this approach. And what I said about last, last video is, this is a system of eating, which should be adaptable as you grow, as a lifter, as you gain more and more muscle, as your maintenance goes up. This is a system of eating which adapts to your goals. If you want to cut body fat and cut even more body fat, if you want to get lean and get super lean. So you are going to have to apply some thinking to this. Now with my clients, I specify exactly what they need to do. I have an education module behind the scenes on my YouTube which is on an unlisted video, which is many hours of content and specifically talks about how to manipulate these factors. So if you do want to take advantage of that, then by all means, there's a link in the description, get in touch. Let's do some coaching for a while so I can teach you hands-on. But the main thing to remember is this system is a continuum of food choices. No matter where you need to be to get the result, move towards that direction, whether it's heavier calorie foods, whether it's less heavy calorie dense foods, do what you need to do to ensure you're moving at the right rate in the right direction. And you know what, for some of you, a cutting diet, especially in the later stages, may well be nothing much more than chicken, white fish, vegetables. And some of you, when you're bulking, your diet may have to get pretty heavy may have to minimize the amount of vegetables so you can maximize the amount of rice and breads and potatoes. You might have to find fattier cuts of meat. You might have to go for the higher percentage of the beef, the pork. So just do what you need to do and try and get out this way of thinking of there are diet foods. There is your requirements and you change what you're eating based on those requirements. Okay. So hopefully that was useful kind of three-stage guide of what rate of weight you should be gaining and losing, how to track, and then also how to influence the body weight week by week. Cool. I am going to call it there. Hopefully that was useful and I'll speak to you real soon.